My name is Robert Scandal Jackson, and in a few minutes, everything about my life is going to change. My dad used to say that while it's fun to win, winning teaches us nothing. The real lessons in life only happen when we fail. My dad never went to college, but he was the smartest man I ever knew. Children and I will never be able to thank you. <laughs> Let's get moving, Royce. I got another passenger coming. A girl. Danielle LaPointe. Just give it another minute or two, Mr. Crandall, and then we'll get going. Hi, I'm so sorry I've kept you waiting. That's okay, ma'am. It's not a problem. Here, let me get these for you. Oh, sorry. Um. Do you mind? I'm Cliff Crandall. This is my brother, Stone. Congratulations. What are you doing up here? Don't look like no ice dweller to me. I'm on business. Yeah? What business? My business. She ain't gonna run out on. Put her down. I got something for you, Bohunk. And this ain't no check with three zeros. Put her down. Stay where you are. I'm trying to that fancy stuff on me. I said put her down. Stay where you are!
contract is canceled. Time to poop you, man. Okay, here's the deal. I got him stabilized. I don't know what, if any brain damage he might have. We'll have to wait to determine that. Okay, so fix it. Um, Miss... LaPointe. Miss LaPointe, I'm just hoping to save his life. He's gonna need facial implants, a complete jaw rebuild. I don't know what, if anything, we have on hand. Listen, I don't care what it costs, okay? If you have to fly in an expert, I'll cover it. Whatever it takes to save Mr. Jackson's life. Whatever it takes, just do it. Please. Oh, Sheriff. Get on the horn to Baltimore PD and send him this here profile on the Colorado River murderer. Got a whole list of post office behavior coming in from Denver PD right now. Hello, Dallas speaking. It's me, I found him. Good girl. It's not so good, Dallas. I walked in on the last act of something. Two guys were trying to kill him in an Indian village north of Juneau. They put a bullet in his head and he's critical right now. Damn. It took us a year to find him. If we want to stick with Scandal Jackson, we have to cover the doctor's bills. He's on leave from the SEAL to use their medical to lead less of a trail. Well, that's the other thing. I don't have the answer yet, but he's changed his name and his hair color, so I think maybe he's AWOL. A month before he's going to be discharged? Why? Okay, Mr. Jackson. Let's see what we have here. Let's not put a dressing on. Better give it some air now. Maybe I'll find a way to pay for patching me up. Right now, it's sort of between the eyes. It's been taken care of. By who? Woman. Danielle Point. She's been here every day checking on you. In fact, she's outside right now. Whoa, whoa, whoa. whoa. Take it easy. She paid for all this surgery. Cashier's check. Made out by some outfit called Cobra, Bay City. She's been waiting to talk to you. Is she alone? Yes, she's alone. 
You don't look quite right yet. You might not want to see her. Send her in. My dad told me that in order for a person to be truly successful in life, he had to make three major life decisions. He said if all three are correct, then a person will achieve all his life goals. My first one had been made when I joined Navy SEALs. I knew it would either forge me or get me killed. I was about to make the second. Mr. Jackson? talk to you. Who are you? How do you know my real name? Let's go, lady. You're running out of time. My name is Danielle Lapointe. I've been looking for you up here for a month. I found out that you were attached to the Navy SEALs unit in Anchorage doing ice training, that you went AWOL, changed your name, and were hiding in an Indian village. How'd you find that out? Look, Mr. Jackson, this isn't the way I wanted to conduct this interview. You're not conducting an interview. All right. I represent a very sophisticated company. We're trained in this sort of thing. Like I said before, we found out that you're AWOL from the military and that you got money for the school by prize fighting under contract to the men who shot you. We'd like to talk to you. Mr. Jackson, I already know you're on the run. If I wanted to turn you in, I would have done it while you were lying here unconscious. Make your pitch. I'd like you to come to Bay City and meet with a man. He's very sympathetic to your situation. He has a proposal for you, which I think you might like. Something called Cobra paid my medical. It's a foundation. We'd like to employ you. Not interested. How about this? You want the Inuits to have a nice school, and I've seen the hut that they're being taught in, so... What if Cobra pays to build it right? We'll put in heating, blackboards, renovations, computer systems, everything. Mr. Jackson, please, we need your help. Bad work for a country cutter. Welcome to Cobra. This here room is called a castle. Spelled C-A-S-S-E-L. Stands for... Yeah, I read on the door what it stands for. Son, you're packing the latitude. Why don't you just calm down? Look, I don't know who you people are or what you want. I'm Dallas Castle. And I know a lot about you. I found out you were being tried by military court because you refused a direct order while on a covert mission behind enemy lines. You refused to blow up a command center with some civilians in it. Of course, the DOD directive says civilians in a war zone are collateral targets. You've been busy. Mm-hmm. Hey, got some good green ribbons in here. Navy Cross, not bad. Two-year officer said it should have been the CMH. Of course, the way I remember it, Grunt doesn't get the Medal of Honor unless he's tits up under a cross. So you took off, went over the wall, changed your name, started hiding out on an ice floe. And I can put all that behind you. You can, huh? That there's your honorable discharge signed by a district commander. This a forgery? Nope, even got your CO to write a letter of apology. Where the hell is that little ditty? How'd you do this? We work for a billionaire named Quentin Avery. He funds this foundation. He also dines with presidents. You've gone to a lot of trouble. When I say no, does this HD go away? No, you already own that toaster, son. Just put that discharge in your pocket. It's done. I'm hoping it'll make you look kindly on our offer. I'm listening. 
Cobra assists victims of crime, people who haven't benefited from the system. We do that by targeting the perps and bringing them to justice. We'd like you to work as our field operative. You've been an investigator for NSI. You have combat skills from your special training. We need somebody who knows how to carry the ball after the handoff. I'd like to help what I can. Uh -huh. I thought it might interest you to know who the first victim was. Five years ago, Robert Scandal Jackson, your father, was murdered. He was in his fishing cabin and was killed by a serial killer, just a random hit. Your father's partner, Jake, had a shootout with the killer in a motel room, killed him. A month ago, another killing took place, exact same M.O. as your father's, right down to the diamond cutter that cut through the window. We don't think your father's killer died in that motel room five years ago. We think he just killed again. Seemed to us, a man wouldn't turn down a chance to catch his father's killer. Want to reconsider? I took the liberty of preparing a room for you. What's more than a room, actually? It's uh, it's more like an apartment. Hope you like it. What's over there? My apartment. Dallas lives on the floor below with his computers. I'm sure you can make any changes that you'd like. Are you kidding? For the last few years, all I've lived in was field barracks and roach motels. <laughs> the guy who killed my father was on a psychopathic rampage. Killed four people in three states in less than 48 hours. Now this new murder of Thomas Nelson, how could that be? I don't know. If he was a serial killer, maybe he was in jail. Why the chloroform? Why do you need the silence? You know, your file doesn't say you have an uncle. It says that Jake Mills was your father's partner in the police department. He's my godfather. I always called him Uncle Jake ever since I was a kid. This must be very hard for you. I know it's coming pretty fast. I'll call you later. Identical to your father's. His name was Thomas Nelson. He ran a bottle of water company called Jungle Rain. How do you get into these computers? I got me a batch of buddies back in Washington for my days with the Frisbees. XFBI. Yep. So I know how you could have made the decision you did. You're saying you'd have done the same thing? No, I'm not saying anything. Every man's got to draw his own line in the sand. Seems like you've done that. You took responsibility for your action. That's okay by me. Okay, Dallas, I'm aboard for this one ride at least. See where it leads us. Good. Good. Oh, by the way, I'm going to send Danny into the field with you. You find she's worth a lot, but I don't want that little gal dusted up. You take care of her. I can't watch a novice. She's not a novice. She's got good skills. Just don't let anything happen to her. Or you're going to have this hornet right down your throat, stinging your heart. You and I just might learn to get along.
Thomas Nelson had a nice house. Yes, he did, but I don't think we should just walk in. Just follow my lead. Hello, anybody home? Yes. Howdy. <laughs> Bud Pike, Ross Real Estate. Oh. This is my client, Miss Pettibone. Can we take a look at the house? Uh, yeah, sure, that's okay, Mr. Pike. I'm Jenny Nelson. Thomas Nelson was my father. I'm just trying to clear out some of his things. Uh... I hate to ask you this, Miss Nelson, but... Uh, in case my client asks... What room did the, uh, you know, that tragedy occur? His den, which is through there. Den. Listen, I'll leave you two alone and I'll just be out in the garage if you need me. Good. Take your time. Thank you very much. What is it? I wonder why he's facing that way. What do you mean? Okay. He's at his desk. He hears something, he goes to the door. He's attacked. Seems to me his feet would be the other way towards the desk. Maybe there was a struggle. What are you doing? on the pipe. They use this to chloroform Nelson. I one in my dad's toilet five years ago. Let's go. The car was registered to this room the night of the murder. They must have cleaned this room hundreds of times since then. Yeah. There's some places where they don't clean. Places where a man who's afraid of being caught might leave his fingerprints. This I've got to see. Okay. You're the killer. You're scared. On the run. Hiding. But you need to go out for food. What do you do? Go out the door. No, no, no. You're hiding. Hold it. Don't touch that. Unless this joint has an old conference cleaning crew, but this spot right here didn't get done. Bingo. Dallas, what'd you get? Okay, thanks, bye. How old could those prints be that you lifted? No more than a month or two, depending on how dry the weather was, why? The prints belong to a Marine lieutenant named Colby McCullough. Lieutenant McCullough died in a military air transport crash over the Rocky Mountains, July 9th. 1988. Two days after my father was murdered.
deputy dog. He came to see one of my boys slide down a razor blade in his jock strap. I got a Bay City Police computer request on Colby McCullough, and I'm saying to myself, how could that be? He's been under lock and key for five years. You haven't been taking these crews to the ball games, have you, Sergeant? Now, Colonel, in case you forgot, these soldiers got brand new wiring diagrams. I take them to a ballpark, someone jostles them, we got a body count higher than Conseco's batting average. Lieutenant McCullough is here? Oh, yeah. All ten physical bodies present accounted for. You want to take a look? Why are they in combat prep? Well, I keep them combat ready. They think they're back in Rocket City. It's the only way to keep them cool. That's McCullough. And he hasn't left this facility? Colonel, you've seen the security I've got here. These guys aren't going anywhere till the day they die. This man was a hero. I want him out of that cage. Go ahead, be my guest. You go in there and take him out, he's gonna try to kill everybody in sight. So you tell me how the Bay City cops got Lieutenant McCullough's prints out of that motel. I don't know, Colonel. But you're welcome to come here anytime you want. Check us out. They'll all be here. If you plan to stay a while, you better bring a radio. They don't say much here. Mr. Botticelli, we've got a little problem here. We need to talk. My dad and I bought this car in 76. Wouldn't even run. Engine was blown. Uh-huh. Spent $9,000 for it. Really? Took five years rebuilding it. See this. Ready? Ready. Wow. It's a beautiful scandal. Zero to sixty in less than five seconds. Believe me, I know. What do you think? <laughs> Not bad. Not bad. Four hundred and fifty horses tops out over one fifty. Get in. Wait to hear this thing. to me in his will and I'd kept it up even when I was overseas. It was my one physical connection to my past and to him. My sixth grade summer, Dad and I pasted sports posters on the walls. Willie Mays, sun in his eyes, making a basket catch, and John Riggins, frozen in time, straight arming a defender. Sometimes when my homework got me daydreaming, I used to look up at the pictures and wish I could be them. My dad told me that speed and reflexes were gifts from God. The victories they brought should not be worshipped. Spiritual victories mean more, he said, because they had to be earned. Scandal? I think you should come and see this. Uh, excuse me, but Scandal Jackson Jr. owns this place? Owned it. Young Scandal died. They shipped his body back here yesterday. Funeral's gonna be this afternoon. He what? Dallas Castle speaking. Anybody ever tell you you're a lying piece of dirt? <laughs> Lots of guys. Is this the late Scandal Jackson calling? 
Is that how you got my honorable discharge? You told him I was dead? Okay, when you calm down, you're gonna see how perfect this is. You got a new face. I promised the Navy you wouldn't show up, so I buried you. What's the problem? Robert Jackson Jr. is dead. Scandal was your nickname, so I set it up under that name. New life, new record. No old enemy's gonna come looking for you. Listen, son, you're dealing with a man spent his glory years figuring out ways how to outfox meat eaters. Just go to your funeral, have a few laughs. Call me when you calm down. <laughs> the flame of his spirit make him one with the universe in Jesus name amen and now Jake Mills would like to say a few words uh, okay this boy he was um He was, excuse me. He was a good boy. And I'll miss him. Well, Lenny, it's getting dusty down here. Another shooter. Got a beer. Hey, pal. Try the next stool. I don't need a belly right just now. You got a pretty able mouth for an old lush. Who are you calling a lush? Sit down, old man. Do you want a piece of my action? Excuse me. Always had the best left cross in the biz. You see that, kid? <laughs> That's pretty good. Hey, buy my new pal here a beer. Sober up, I gotta talk to you. Man, you sound a lot like somebody I used to know. Kid named Scandal Jackson. His dad was my best friend. It's me, Uncle Jake. It's Scandal. Very young Scandal this afternoon, right next to his daddy. Best damn cop ever lived. It's me. It's Scandal. Well, Bob and me, we, we was gonna. Take a little scandal out once the Ticonderoga 2 was finished. I'm gonna show them how to sail a big boat. But now they're both gone. Dead. Uncle Jake. I had a bad accident. They operated on me, changed the way I look. You stop it! I told you. I've been at young scandal this afternoon. 
On my fifth birthday, you bought me a Willie Mays baseball glove. The feel master. Go ahead. Ask me anything, I'll prove it to you. Scandal had a friend. Living next door. Tony Freeman. He had a dog. What was his? Cocker Spaniel named Douglas. You fell off your bike and chipped your tooth when you were seven. I took you to the hospital. than I thought. Hell, I'm almost as in bad a shape as this lady. I don't own her anymore. After your dad died, I couldn't bear to even work on her. Just made me real sad to come down here. I just let her go. Joe here at the yard ended up taking her over for slip fees. Then after a while, he pulled her out because she was leaking and stuck her here. Sad end. Uh, Sort of like an old street bowl we both know. <laughs> Jake, the man you killed at the motel, I don't think he was my father's murderer. Best to let the dead rest in peace. No, I can't. Another murder happened a month ago, exact same M.O. Leave it alone, please. Look, you didn't know everything, Bobby. You couldn't, and I couldn't tell you. There's nothing I couldn't know about my father. Nothing. He had a problem. He got him into, he got him into debt with the wrong people. You know, bad people. And they, they, look, you don't need to know about this. He's dead. It ain't gonna do nobody no good. You're trying to tell me my father was dirty? Is that what you're saying? Look, I, I, I can't do this right now, okay? I, I, I'm buzzed. Can we talk about it in the morning? My father wasn't dirty. No way was he dirty. It's a long story. Please don't make me do it this way. I need to tell you so you'll understand. Please. Drank her up, along with everything else I made a damn in my life. First thing in the morning, okay? So, 
The answers to the mystery were supposed to be on the Ticonderoga. Unfortunately, the answers led to more questions. Questions about my dad I didn't want to face. My dad was everything to me. He wasn't perfect, but he was my best friend. And now, seeing him doing business with a mobster like Wayne Botticelli, well, it made me ill. The very idea my dad was dirty hit me like a shockwave, shattering every positive image I ever had of him. You know, remember, son. Life is like sailing. When you make a mistake, don't overcorrect. I'll try, Daddy, I'll try.